Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about data interpretation, which is a category of measurement in data. Now, the specific topic we're looking at today is called coordinates and maps, and it'll begin with a short description of what these types of questions will typically involve. So coordinate and maps will involve a graph of two axes, one usually labeled with numbers and the other with alphabets or numbers. Coordinates are always read from the horizontal axes first and then the vertical axis is written in the form x coordinate, y coordinate. We're given an example here where we can see the point 3, 2 has been shown on this diagram. So these questions can mean we need to understand how directions work and also have some spatial awareness. That's because we may need to be required to draw shapes as well as draw the position of multiple points within the graph. Properties of basic 2D shapes may also be tested within these questions. Okay, so coordinate questions or any questions involving coordinates utilizes what's basically two number lines. I'm sure we're all very familiar with just the simple number line where it looks like this and there's numbers from say one to 10 and all the numbers in between. So the coordinate is simply two of these uh, number lines going in both directions. And we can see the example of that um, right here. So because there's now two lines that we need to deal with rather than one, we usually give them a name so we can refer to them specifically. And for some reason, mathematicians really love the X and Y letters and that is what these lines are called. The horizontal axis is always called the X axis and the vertical axis is always called the Y axis. Now, you can see how because we do have two points or two axes that we're dealing with, the order of which we ref refer to first becomes important because how do we know if 3, 2 is actually this point or even this point, which is technically 3 and 2. So what's important is that, like we read in the description, horizontal axes always comes first or you always read the horizontal axis first. So whenever you're given a coordinate, which is always given in the form of a, it's uh, within these two brackets and we've got two numbers, the first number and the second number. As I said, the first number has to be the x-axis first. So for example, when we're given this point here, this point, if we take a look at the horizontal axis, it lies on the number three. And on the vertical axis, the point is lying on the number two line. So this point is referred to as three, two rather than two, three, since we have to read this number always first. If you kind of forget which axis goes where, I kind of remember it as an X, looks like a cross, a cross. And it's very similar to the word across, which means to go this direction. So always remember the X axis is the important one, comes first and is the horizontal version. So, uh, this is still the case even when you sometimes see for maps in particular, they don't actually use numbers to label these grid points, but rather they will be labeled with the alphabet letters. So sometimes you'll see A, B, C, D, E, etc. labeling the points. And even if it looks like this, the rule is still the same. You would still read whatever this is first. So this point with this alphabet grid would, would be labeled as C, B, since we're on these two lines. Now, we can see a lot of these coordinate questions and they usually deal with identifying where certain points will be and that could be related to different 2D shapes. So having some knowledge of what 2D shape properties are and those would be things like squares having right angles on all their sides and all the sides being the same, rectangles, triangles, you get the gist. So having some knowledge of that will definitely help in answering these questions. Another thing is that coordinate questions 
can very be easily linked with direction related questions. So that means we need to understand how those work. We know that we can draw a quick compass using never eat soggy wheat bix to identify which direction is where and uh, um, apply that into our coordinate system. So all those things are some knowledge or ideas that we want to keep in the back of our minds whenever we tackle coordinate and map questions. To do so, let's try it out on this example question. Here we have a question that says, what is the final coordinate of a right angle triangle with the coordinates 2, 9 and 8, 3? So this is definitely a question where a diagram comes into very handy. So let's uh, quickly draw up a grid where we can pinpoint where these coordinates look like. Okay, so drawing up a grid or copy pasting a lid in my case, I'm going to draw the x axis first and the y axis and also label the points. Okay, so now that we have a grid, we can then plot these two given points. Remember that the uh, format for coordinates is always this has to be the horizontal and this is the vertical. So making sure we follow that rule, the first point is 2, 9. So we would be looking at this line here for 2 and then see where it corresponds with the number 9. So the point would be over here. Let's plot that in. And the second point was 8 and 3. So that would belong on the 8 on the x axis and 3 on the y axis. So that must be this point here. So we can quite comfortably join these two lines together to create part of the right angle triangle. So since we're building a right angle triangle, it kind of looks like we have two different possibilities. If we continue on the diagram from these two points, we've got a right angle right here, and we could also just do it in the opposite direction where it would be here. So the two potential answers could lie in these two points. So now we are going to do the reverse of this step where we now actually try to read what these points are. This first point down in the bottom, remember, we always read the horizontal axes first. We'll start with a 2 and uh, the second number will be 3. As for the other point, again, reading down to the x-axis, the first number will be 8 and the second number will be 9. So taking a look at the answer options, it looks like this point is unfortunately not one of the answer options. So the right angle triangle they're looking for must look like this. So the point we're looking for is actually this one, and that is going to be option C. Okay, so through this example, we see how important it is to draw up a diagram for these types of questions and how important it is to realize that the coordinates have a specific method of reading them. Because if you actually did it the other way around, you would get a very different diagram and answer. So always, always remember that coordinates should be read with the horizontal axes first. If you keep that at the back of your minds, it should be not too bad to answer future coordinate questions when you do and when you encounter them later on. So with that, this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you everyone so much for listening.